Hi class. So we meet again to discuss the estimation and hypothesis testing about the difference between two population proportions for large and independent samples. This is the last video of my lecture series on hypothesis testing for two population. You have done so well in understanding the hypothesis testing for two population means and I hope that you are still with me to continue your journey in understanding hypothesis testing between two population proportions. Okay, we will first talk about the sampling distribution of the difference between two sample proportions when the samples are large and independent then the sampling distribution of p1 hat minus p2 hat is approximately normally distributed and the mean and standard deviation are given as follows now if you still remember the mean of the sample proportion for one population is equals to p and now when you have the mean for p1 hat minus p2 hat is simply an extension of this formula here if you still recall the standard deviation of the sample proportion is the square root of pq over n right and this is simply an extension of this formula do you still recall what is q if p is the proportion of success then q would be the proportion of failure so for example q1 will be 1 minus p1 and q2 will be 1 minus p2 for one population proportion the confidence interval is p hat plus minus z alpha over 2 p hat q hat over n square root of this. So the confidence interval for p1 minus p2 is an extension of the previous formula that we have discussed. Because the sample size is large, then we would use the normal distribution. So the test statistics for p1 hat minus p2 hat is as given here. So the test statistics would be p1 hat minus p2 hat minus p1 minus p2. This is from your null hypothesis. It's usually zero but it's not necessarily zero always, all the time. So it depends on your null hypothesis. And the sample standard deviation of p1 hat minus p2 hat. Okay, let's look at this formula closely. It says that this is equal to the square root of p bar q bar multiplied by 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. And let's look at what is p bar. p bar would be x1 plus x2 over n1 plus n2 where your x will be the number of success. Class, what do you think is the formula for q bar? Perfect. So q bar would be 1 minus p bar. Class, I need your attention on the sample standard deviation of p1 hat minus p2 hat. For hypothesis testing, the formula contains the pool sample proportion. This differs from the formula for your confidence interval. Look, the sample standard deviation of p1 hat minus p2 hat is the square root of p hat q hat over n1 plus p2 hat q2 hat over n2. Writing out the null and alternative hypothesis for the difference of two population proportions is similar to writing out the null and alternative hypothesis for the difference of two population means. In this example, we are first asked to find the point estimate of the difference between two population proportions. 
Next, we are asked to construct a 96% confidence interval and finally conduct a hypothesis test. Let's first extract the information given in this question. So it says that a sample of 600 luggage from airline company P showed that 9 are lost. Another sample of 700 luggage from airline company Q showed that 15 luggage are lost. And the Consumer Protection Agency once wanted to check whether the proportion of luggage lost differ or don't differ. Okay, so we have two airline companies which are P and Q. The sample size from airline P is 600. The sample size from Q is 700. So the success in this case would be luggage that are lost. And that would be X, the number of success. So from company P would be 9. And from company Q would be 15. That means P hat in this case would be 9 out of 600. And here would be 15 out of 700. And Q hat would be 1 minus P hat which is 591 out of 600 for company P. And 685 out of 700 for company Q. Let me rename company P to company 1 and company Q to company 2 to make things easier for us. Okay, so I'm going to answer question A. The point estimate of the difference between two pro Two population proportions, that means P1 minus P2 is P1 hat minus P2 hat, which would be 9 out of 600 minus 15 out of 700, which is negative 9 out of 1,400. Okay, on to question B. A 96% confidence interval for the difference in the proportions of luggage loss between company P and Q would be at any time that we can't remember the formula, we would simply take a look at the formula. So this is the formula for the confidence interval for the difference between two population proportions. The formula is P1 hat minus P2 hat plus minus Z alpha over 2 as P1 hat minus P2 hat. So for the confidence interval, for the sample standard deviation of P1 hat minus P2 hat, we would use this formula here. So I'm just going to rewrite it in the working square root of P1 hat Q1 hat over N1 plus P2 hat Q2 hat over N2 and this gives us so P1 hat minus P2 hat is negative 9 over 1400 plus minus the critical value for the 96% confidence interval because we are using the normal distribution let's have a look at the standard normal distribution but before that i would draw 
the normal distribution. So this is 0 0.96. That means this is 2% or 0 0.02. And this is also 2%. And this is Z alpha over 2. This is negative Z alpha over 2. So when the probability is 0 0.02, let's have a look at the value of Z. As highlighted here, when the probability is closest to 0 0.02, the Z value is negative 2.05. So negative Z is negative 2.05 and Z would be 2.05. Square root of so P1 hat would be 9 out of 600, Q1 hat 591 out of 600 over N1 600 plus P2 hat is 15 out of 700 and Q2 hat is 685 out of 700 over N2 which is 700 and this gives us a confidence interval from negative 0 0.0216 to 8.7167 So a 96% confidence interval for the differences in the proportions of all luggage loss between companies P and Q would be between these two values. On to question C. Testing at the 5% significance level, can you conclude that the proportions of all luggage loss between airline company P and Q are different. So different would go to the alternative, the proportions, the difference between P1 and P2 is not equals to zero. So our null hypothesis would be P1 minus P2 is equals to zero and the next step would be the test statistics so because the sample size is large we are going to use the standard normal distribution we have here z star equals to p1 hat minus p2 hat minus p1 minus p2 over so the standard deviation so the sample standard deviation of p1 hat minus p2 hat for the hypothesis test is different from the sample standard deviation of p1 hat minus p2 hat for the confidence interval let's have a look at the formula for hypothesis testing we are going to use the pool formula the values of P bar and Q bar are not provided. We've discussed that P bar is equals to X1 plus X2 over N1 plus N2. And Q bar is 1 minus P bar. So let's find the values of P bar and Q bar. So the formula for P bar is X1 plus X2 over N1 plus n2 we have here x1 is 9 and x2 is 15 n1 is 600 and n2 is 700 p bar gives us 0 0.0185 and Q bar is simply 1 minus P bar. So 1 minus 0 0.0185. And this gives us 0 
9815. So this would be P bar times Q bar multiplied by 1 over N1 which is 600. plus 1 over N2 which is 700 and our test statistic says negative 0 0.8575 alpha is 5% so the rejection region is 0 0.025 Similar to the one here. Let's check for the critical points. So when alpha is 0 0.025, the critical point is negative 1.96. Negative 1.96 and 1.96. So let's compare the test statistics with the Rejection region, the test statistic definitely falls outside the rejection region. So let's make a conclusion. That star falls in the non-rejection region. So we accept H null. So in this case, because we accept the null hypothesis, we could not conclude that the proportions of luggage lost between companies P and Q are different. Before we end this session, I would like to take the opportunity to check if we fulfilled the objectives of this chapter which is estimation and hypothesis for two populations. In the first video, we have discussed constructing the confidence interval and performing hypothesis testing for the difference between two population means for large and independent samples. In order to construct confidence interval and perform hypothesis testing, for the difference between two population means for small and independent samples, for equal and unequal standard deviations. So when the standard deviations are equal, we have discussed constructing confidence interval and hypothesis testing in video 2. And for unequal standard deviations, we've discussed estimation and hypothesis testing in video 3. In this video, we have discussed constructing confidence interval and performing hypothesis testing for the difference between two population proportions for large and independent samples. All three objectives have been fulfilled in this chapter. Okay class, thank you for your attention. If you have problems organizing all those formulas in your mind, please check out the mind mapping video for this chapter. You can find the link in the description box below and I'll see you in the next video.